Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for holding this hearing, and uh, thank you to our witnesses for being here to share your thoughts on uh, on this topic and the draft legislation we are uh, considering today. Today, concerned Americans continue to ask the question: What's the future of American jobs? A big part of our future competitiveness depends on our ability to move new and emerging technologies out of the lab and into the mainstream of commerce. Accelerating technology transfer from our universities and national labs has been one of my pro highest priorities since I've come to Congress. I believe the potential for job creation emanating from research being performed at these institutions is immense. We must capitalize on these opportunities and get the best possible return our, in our investments and in research to the creation of new products, new companies, and new American jobs. Let me make one point clear. Our competitors have noticed how well our innovation system works, and many are trying to imitate it. Countries like China and members of the European Union are now investing heavily in their own R&D programs. Combined business and government spending on R&D in China, for instance, has been increasing by almost 20 percent a year over the past decade. And China has already overtaken Japan as the number two publisher of scientific articles. They are determined to move up the value, value chain into higher tech, higher paying jobs. We need sustained investments in smart policies if we want to remain the world leader in science and technology. However, the path from the lab to a successful business is anything but straightforward. It depends on an integrated network of private companies, scientists and engineers, universities, venture capitalists, startups, and entrepreneurs. It also depends on the entrepreneurial environment, timing, and luck. Some universities have had more success in technology transfer than others. Some scientists are better prepared or more inclined to be entrepreneurial. In some parts of the country, have cultivated networks of entrepreneurs and venture capitalists who have vast experience turning ideas into products that can transform our everyday lives. The draft legislation attempts to increase the successful transition to thriving startup by supporting innovative approaches to technology transfer. The draft bill language is similar to an amendment I sponsored two years ago to the Creating Jobs Through Small Business Innovation Act of 2011. My amendment was incorporated into SBIR STTR reauthorization with bipartisan support and allowed for a proof of concept pilot program at the National Institutes of Health. That amendment, similar to the legislation being discussed today, did not spend any new money. Instead, it allowed NIH to use money from their STTR fund to set up a grant program to support translational research and entrepreneurial education activities at universe, universities across the nation. At a time when we struggle with job creation in a fast-changing global economy, we need to be looking more closely at how best we can help our universities and national labs, fill with the world's best researchers, be even better economic engines that power America's future. When technologies have been developed with federal taxpayer resources, we should explore whether there is a role for the government to play in aiding potential commercialization. Most venture capitalists are unwilling to take on the risk in the early stages of the innovation ecosystem, and in fact, their investments are moving farther and farther downstream. I believe this legislation has the potential to improve our return on investment in research, and I'm interested in our witnesses' recommendations on the draft bill. In particular, I'm interested in hearing their comments on using funds from the SDTR program to support technology transfer activities, as well as their thoughts on the reporting obligations in the draft bill and whether this information is readily available or would be overly burdensome to collect. I know that alleviating bureaucratic burdens on universities has rightfully been the focus of the subcommittee. I also hope the witnesses will provide us with some information on best practices, model programs, or policies that can improve the technology transfer process, an appropriate role of the federal government in supporting such efforts. The draft legislation as written gives agencies discretion on what types of programs to fund with these grants. I'd like to understand the most useful places for the federal government to be involved and the major gaps or barriers federal resources can help overcome. I look forward to working 
to advance legislation on this important topic. Uh, we need to do all we can to help turn American discoveries into American jobs. And as I said, I, I very much like this, uh, the draft legislation we have, have out there, uh, maybe because uh, I, think, I believe Mr. Collins is a uh, mechanical engineer, uh, the most brilliant people that there are. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I think that um, we have, there's a lot that we can learn from the witnesses today about how best to, uh, uh, to take the draft legislation and put it into a, a, a final bill. But uh, I appreciate the, the opportunity to uh, hear from our witnesses today. Thank you.